What's up, y'all? It's your boy Kev on stage, and I just woke up <clears throat> in Houston for the week, and I've decided to make a video about this uh, Mike Brown um, fatal shooting and Ferguson riots and all that stuff. And the reason I've taken so long, not it's not because I'm afraid to make videos or anything like that. I've actually tweeted about it and Instagram about it pretty much the whole time. But the reason I did wait so long is because I was um, unsure of exactly what to say. You know, I you know I, I don't script most of my videos, and I just talk from the heart. But for this, I want to be clear in my thoughts. And then I realize I'm, I'm making the video today. I'm not really clear in my thoughts today either. But I'm just I I need to I don't know say something because I just I I feel so just like angry, both angry, frustrated, and sad at the same time. I want to read you some names, okay? You may have heard of some, you may have not. Amadou Diallo, Sean Bell, Oscar Grant, Travis Carter, Wendell Allen, Eric Garner, John Crawford, Ezel Ford, Mike Brown. These are all unarmed black men shot or killed by police. All, and I'm familiar with nearly every, every story not all, but but most of them. And the reason this situation is so frustrating and you know so you know it makes me so angry is because Kevin Fredericks could easily be added to that list. Isaiah Fredericks, Josiah Fredericks, Anthony Davis, DJ Tabor, you know, people, myself, my family, my friends, William O'Kelly, they're all black men who generally walk around unarmed. These people weren't all committing crimes. Sean Bell, wedding night, shot 50 times by police. Ezel Ford was in LA two, two or three days ago, yesterday I believe, mentally ill. John Crawford in a Walmart holding a toy gun. Committing a crime? No. Some were committing crimes. Eric Garner was a, uh, suspected of selling illegal cigarettes. But here's the thing. Is it the police job to be the judge, the jury, and executioner of a, of a criminal? No. It's a police's job to protect and serve. They have um, the job to bring in suspected criminals and then let the rest of the judicial system, the rest of the justice system, handle the rest. And here's the problem. People don't like to talk about race. There have been countless mass killings. The Colorado shooter, countless mass killings, the Virginia Tech shooter. Oftentimes, these people are arrested. I don't know how. They're walking around with assault rifles, shooting people. The Colorado guy who killed the people in the movie theater, walking around, shooting people. And they are somehow brought to justice, get arrested, and allowed to take a trial and plead insanity or whatever. These are black men who don't even have a gun and are killed by police. Oscar Grant shot and killed with his hands already behind his back in handcuffs. Shot and killed. In America. In 2014. Okay, people like to say race doesn't play a part of it. Come on now. Come on. I'm not, I'm not even going to allow you to, to say that. Am I here saying every cop is racist? Absolutely not. I have, a, I have a, just one friend of mine, good friend of mine, police officer, great friend of mine. I'm not saying every cop is bad. I am saying that when there's a gun in your hand and you're afraid, you are more likely to kill someone. Police member or not. Matter of fact, there's a story just came out today. A cop shot his own daughter as she tried to enter the house. She snuck out, was sneaking back into the garage, and he shot her. The race hasn't been identified, but it shows that when you are afraid, you shoot to kill. And the problem is black men terrify people, police and otherwise. It's the absolute truth. Black men in our living, walking, I'm six foot tall. You can't see this from the video, but I'm six foot tall with bad eyesight. 
If I'm walking around in the middle of the night, if you see me walking in your neighborhood, you might get scared. I make videos for a living, funny videos every, nearly every single day. But if I'm walking in your neighborhood like this, I got bad eyesight, I don't have my glasses on, and I'm walking like this, in your neighborhood, more than likely, you might get scared. I went to neighbors' houses at night, knocking on their door, they left their car door open, things like that. They'd open the door, talk to them the next day, man, I didn't know who you were in the middle of the night. Okay, now granted, most people might not open the door to anybody in the middle of the night, but I've seen people be scared of me. And I can't, listen, I can't harm a fly. So um, I wrote notes about this because there's some things I wanted to get out specifically. Um, there's two things you can do, because part of the reason I was feeling so angry and frustrated is because I feel like I live in L.A., this is happening in, in Ferguson, and there's, and there's nothing I can do. But there's two things you can do. In the link below, there, in the link below there's a change.org petition. Just read it. It lists all the names of the men I, I, I mentioned killed, but it's to help change the laws about police killing unarmed suspects, race or not. So there's that that you can sign. It started off at about you know, 5,000 signatures, over 100,000. And there's also a friend of mine on Twitter is sending food and supplies to protesters in um, Ferguson. So her email, the email that you can send, the PayPal was transferring to, Fer uh, to Ferguson is there. And the last thing I want to talk about is the way the police are handling this situation in Ferguson. I don't know if you've been watching the news or Twitter or following this, but I, I, I'm nearly consumed by it. And this just goes to show police are not trained very well to handle these types of things. Generally, when you have large groups of people protesting, like what happened in New York or something like that, the police are dispatched for crowd control. What do they usually have? And all the civil war uh, or civil uh, rights movement photographs and stuff, and even up to today, when police are doing crowd control, what do they usually have? They usually have batons and shields, maybe horses. These police have, in Ferguson, tanks, guns, sniper rifles pointed at civilians, unarmed protesters, hands up. This just goes to show St. Louis County Police Department is ill-equipped to handle protests. Now, I'm not talking about the looting and the rioting. I'm talking about assembly of protesters. The police are pointing guns at them. In 2014, and this is black and white people, ill-equipped to handle this. Arresting reporters, there's an Al Jazeera um, crew, which is like national news, dispatched to the Missouri, um, uh, to, to the, you know, to, to Missouri to cover this. The police forced them to leave, threw tear gas at them, and disassembled their camera. They arrested an al alderman, city council member, or reporters. What are they doing to citizens? They're making citizens go back in their house who are in their front yard, in their backyard. Their property. <sighs> like I said, I'm upset, angry, because I know that I, this could happen to me. You guys can say what you want, law by the citizen, blah, blah, blah. Black man, this could happen to me. This can happen to my son. I don't know what happened. I don't know why this officer shot this kid. I've heard that. Um, he was, you know, stealing candy. Okay, maybe he was. Even if he was, I don't know that to be true. Even if he was, I've heard he's resisting arrest. Even if he was. Police officers have more than the gun. They've got tasers. They've got pepper spray. They've got the baton thing. If you've got to beat him, to arrest him, arrest him. You fear for your life, and the first thing you do, pull out your gun and shoot an unarmed teenager, 18 years old. Gotta stop. Gotta stop. It's your boy Kev on stage. Had to get that off my chest. See y'all tomorrow.